Uh, we're happy to be here. Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning if you're seeing us from the other side of the world. This is V. Salazar with Authentic Contemplative Prayer. I'm in here today with Becky, uh, our, our admin extraordinaire and one of the founding members of Authentic Contemplative Prayer. And Becky, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. It's a beautiful Friday here um, in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Good. And Becky, today we have a very special guest today with us in here in Authentic Contemplative Prayer live streaming. And please welcome everybody to our super special guest, Matthew Leonard. Great to be with <laughs> and, you guys. Yes. Matthew, we are so happy to have you here today with us. Well, it's good to be here with you. You're talking about the beautiful weather in uh, Atlanta and South you know, Carolina, wherever you are. I'm in Steubenville, Ohio, and this is kind of like the land that God forgot. It's so <laughs> uh, it's, we serve an Old Testament God here in Steubenville, but it actually has some sun out today. So that's a good thing. That, that is awesome. Well, yeah, we have a beautiful, uh, still summer, and I know we're going to have summer in the South, even in, through fall. So. <laughs> So we still get the chance to go to Myrtle Beach and visit those cool places in here. Sorry, no. But hey guys, today we're going to we're going to be talking Matthew about something very special and dear to you. Uh, let me just pull in here really quick and you know what happened? I had your bio in here in front of me <laughs> when I started with the feedback and I had to close the window. So, uh, Matthew for those who I, I don't know how somebody will not know who you are, but if you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. I am uh, well, I'm a dad. I have six kids. I'm a convert to the faith. I came back into the church almost 25 years ago. This coming Easter, I think, will be my 25th anniversary. And uh, I am head over heels in love with the faith. I'm a pastor's kid. Uh, most of my family and friends think it's crazy to become Catholic. And about 10 years or so after uh, entering the church is when my Catholicism, frankly, really just uh, took off because that's when I discovered what we're going to talk about today. And that is the spiritual life and the life of prayer, the interior life with Jesus Christ. And Catholicism presents that in a way that nobody else does. And that's when my life was just really turned upside down. And I, it put me on the path that I'm on now. Matthew, I, I heard or, or read, I mean, I... I... I have heard you on podcast and I, and you know, I'm, I'm member of the science of signhood community, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And you mentioned somewhere that you were looking for a deeper prayer life with a friend of yours when you were in college. Is that correct? That's right. We, um, I had this best friend growing up. We'd done everything together. Even back in the eighties, when everyone had water beds, he had like this super single water beds, which just a little bit bigger than a regular one. And we would sleep head to toe on this. Like that's how close we were. We were always at each other's house. We were bosom buddies. And I lost track of him for seven years. He kind of went off the deep end. The Lord brought us back together in Woodfield Mall, which is like the third largest mall in America at Christmas time. We got together. He'd had a kind of a reconversion experience. And we started praying together every night. I mean, literally, we barely even knew what we were doing. But we knew we wanted to seek the Lord and we knew that we needed to get our lives back on track. And we just we started praying and uh, it was a, a real turning point in my life. But looking back on it now, it's funny because we prayed every night together, literally sometimes through the night. Like I just pray all the way until it was time to go to work the next morning. But I also really didn't have any idea, frankly, what it is that I was doing other than trying to find God. And you look back on it, it was a sweet time, but it was also a relatively ignorant time in my life but it was a time that the lord used as he was kind of cajoling me like a little baby to come back toward him now now matthew you say you are a convert and by this time when you had this prayerful experience with your friend uh, you were still a, a what was your your christian tradition <laughs> it's called the denomination is called protestant mutt uh I was, I was everything. So my dad was a Methodist pastor and then he became a Pentecostal pastor, which is light years removed from Methodism. And I was in assemblies of God churches and Bible churches. And I went to a Calvinist high school. I graduated from a Swedish covenant university after going to Oral Roberts university as well. Uh, I mean, you name it. And I was probably it at some point in time. Uh, but you could just kind of call me an e a typical evangelical mutt, I guess. 
So in, in, at what point did you decide to explore the Catholic faith? I did not plan on becoming one of you people. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I was raised not anti-Catholic, but my Calvinist high school certainly was not pro-Catholic by any stretch of the imagination. And so I never intended on becoming a Catholic, but I met one Catholic family at that Calvinist high school and getting to know them, uh, that's when my eyes were kind of started to be opened. And we would have these arguments, right, about the faith because I wanted them to get saved. And in the beginning, I would clean their clocks because I knew my Bible as being a pastor's kid. But over time, they started to pose questions that I just could not answer. And conversion for me really came through that relationship. And this is one of the things that I think people need to really focus on again in the church. Evangelization is really a deification process in ourselves that, that translates to other people. And these people were really strong Catholics. And I wanted what it is that they had. And it was about a four-year process for me to, to kind of work my way through the conversion process to see through to Catholicism. I couldn't avoid it, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you what, once I became Catholic in 1998, never one day has there ever been a second thought in my mind, this is the bride of Christ and it is worth everything that I have to give. Amen to that. And Matthew, tell us a bit about how you found your way to discovering the spiritual life and what eventually became the science of sainthood. Yeah, you know, when you become Catholic from a tradition like mine, I, you know, I read so much coming into the church and you become Catholic and also now you're experiencing all the rituals and the treasure that is the church. And it's like there's this treasure chest in front of you all the time that you're just kind of constantly digging into. And you get distracted by that, frankly, a little bit when you first become Catholic, because there's so many different things to learn. And I, my prayer life, frankly, kind of went off the rails a little bit uh, for several years after I became Catholic. I was still doing all the things I needed to do. I was going to I'm daily communicate and have been forever um, doing all those things. But my interior life kind of suffered. And I'd had a stronger one, frankly, when I was Protestant, because, you know, prayer is really kind of all you have. We didn't have the mass. We had Sunday services, but um, I, when I encountered, it was a book by Father Thomas Dubé, uh, who was one of the first ones, The Fire Within was kind of that first book that kind of ticked me over the edge. And uh, from then, I really got interested in the, the mystics of Teresa of Avila and John of the Cross. And it just started me down this road of reading the spiritual giants of the faith. And it just ignited something in my heart. Uh, that has never been quenched. Uh, I, all I desire is what Christ says is the one thing necessary, because when you engage the spiritual life and you realize what that interior relationship with, with God is, it really becomes the pearl of great price. It becomes what it is that you want more than anything else. And it's not easy to find. You've got to do a lot of digging and there's a lot of things that have to change in your life. But the desire was planted for me just by encountering the really the mystics and I, I'm like I want what they have and if sainthood is the goal then I got to find out the way to have it and Jesus says this is the way to do it and so I'm, I'm going to do it. There's so many similarities with my story. Um, yeah, I wasn't raised Protestant and I'm a cradle Catholic but I would describe myself when I was younger as a, a semi-practicing Catholic-ish person and um, about around 2008 is um when I discovered Fire Within as well. And that really just set me on the path to learning more about uh, mental prayer and the spiritual life. And um, I eventually joined a Carmelite community and I'm now a, um, a secular discalced Carmelite. So Fantastic. I love to hear that, that you had found Father Thomas Dubé as well. I just, he's a great teacher. Amen. Yeah, and do you see any difference between the way a very devout Protestant lives the, that, that personal relationship, because one of the things that we hear as Catholics, especially if we are not too into the faith, let, let's just call the normal people on the pew, is like, oh, do you have a personal relationship with Christ? And, and we don't understand how close that is. I mean, talk about the Eucharist and getting really close, right? So it, it, do you see a difference between what a, a devout Protestant and then a Catholic who has found this path on the spiritual life? A, yeah, there, there are big differences. In fact, it's really interesting to me because a book that I read kind of when I was in the process was called A Celebration of Discipline, I think. And I don't remember the name of the author, but it was a Protestant book. And he was talking about doing disciplines 
wish for is penance, you know, and fasting and these kinds of things. I'm like, wait a minute, this is Catholic stuff because I was already reading Catholic literature, right? But it was new to me as a Protestant. That's part of the dissociation that I had as a Protestant. And, and you, it was all about me and Jesus in this personal relationship, but it was almost kind of dissociated from my natural life, if I can put it that way. So as, Catholic, as Catholics, we see it as a union of body and soul. So what I'm acting out interiorly happens exteriorly as well, right? So I'm praying, but I'm also doing things physically like penance and fasting and Lectio Divina and these other things, going to confession, getting to the Eucharist. These are physical things that are actually in union with my interior spirituality. So that's one part of it that I didn't have as a Protestant really, particularly because we didn't have the sacraments, right? The other part of it, um, is that a personal relationship, which is the language we used, and it's totally legit, but it makes it sound like it's only me and Jesus. Mm. And as a Catholic, we understand it in a very different way. It's we and Jesus, right? It, w- this is a family relationship. And everything we have in the Catholic faith is really viewed through the lens of family. So for confession, for example, I go to confession, not just to restore myself, but to restore the family as well, which I'm a part of through the sacrament. So it brings healing to me and the family. So this whole familial aspect of the faith has a huge impact on your interior life because I'm unified with the body of Christ through Jesus Christ. And this process of deification and divinization and transformation that we always talk about, it's not just me becoming like Jesus. It's me being incorporated into that mystical body that you and Becky and everyone else that's baptized in a part of body that Christ is, is a part of. And we're, we're bound for the communion of saints. This is a family effort all the way through. And that's a huge difference between how it is that I was raised and how I see our, our movement into the faith now. That's very beautifully said, Matthew. And um, tell us a bit about how um, you became drawn towards teaching others about the spiritual spiritual life. Yeah, you know, again, I, this is nothing I planned. <laughs> I, I never wanted to even be a pastor when, when uh, I was Protestant. Uh, in fact, I probably kind of ran from it. But the Lord got a, got a hold of me, and um, I, I actually went to work at Ave Maria College when it was still in Michigan, right after I graduated with my master's in theology from Franciscan. And I started doing a little bit of teaching on the side there. And uh, that's kind of when the teaching bug started to teach me a little bit. And then I then they moved to Florida and I stayed in Michigan and started running a real estate development company. I kind of checked out of the, the church world a, a little bit. And then the Diocese of Kalamazoo got in touch with me and said, would you teach a formation program for people who are going through this special program? And I said, OK, I'll, I'll try it. And I started teaching it and found that I loved it. And it was feeding something inside of me because, you know, when you teach, you got to learn the material. Right. And so it was. It was kind of this feeding process that just kind of snowballed. And eventually I took over the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology, and I was there for a little more than a decade. But what I discovered is I started kind of crisscrossing the country and teaching uh, at conferences and in parishes and all kinds of groups and such, which I did for more than a decade there, that once this, the interior life, and I was teaching mostly scripture stuff, right, which was natural for me, being Protestant, you know, it's all about the Bible. When the interior life, when the spiritual theology of the church gets a hold of you and you start to understand what it is and why Jesus says it's the one thing necessary in Luke chapter 10, everything changes because I found that everything that I talked about would eventually come back to the interior life and the process of deification and becoming changed into an actual son or daughter of God in a real way way. And I just couldn't get away from it, right? It just began to dominate everything because that is the end goal. And so I eventually left the St. Paul Center. And that's when I founded the Science of Sainthood, because uh, I found that interior formation and the development of of our our spiritual lives was something that was kind of a a lost art uh, in the church in a lot of ways. And there's a lot of false teaching out there as well. And I found that when this got a a hold of me and I started going through all these old priest manuals and such and really developing seeing that it's a systematic process this was one of the things that was kind of mind-blowing to me we kind of view the spiritual life as a free-for-all right like I just want to stay in a state of grace until Jesus comes back or I die right just don't let me be mortal sin God 
And we don't realize that's just treading water. And we want to dive into this, you know, below the surface, into the depths of the interior life, which is what we are made for. And so everything that I talked about started to, to come back to that because that's what was happening interior in my interiorly in my life. And God had gotten a hold of me and I couldn't shut up about it. And so I, that's what became the focus of everything that, uh, that I did. And I still do. When I go on the road, this is what I typically speak about. And uh, I founded the Science of Sainthood to help walk people through the, 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 tr the process of transformation that everyone else is supposed to go through. Yeah. And one thing I like, uh, Matthew and I, and I read this when I went first into your Science of Signhood website, is that you say there are no plateaus in the spiritual life. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, I got that from St. Augustine. And uh, in fact, I got the name, the Science of Sainthood from St. Augustine as well. He talks about the science of the saints. And St. Catherine of Siena talks about the holy science of love. And sometimes when people hear the word science, they're like, oh, no, you're like going back to junior high earth science or something. It's really just talking about the process of how it is that we are transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. And there is a science to it. It's not a free for all. And there are no plateaus because it's a growth process, just like we grow up in the natural life. You, you move from infancy into adolescence and adulthood. The same thing happens in the spiritual life. You move from infancy into adolescence and spiritual maturity. And it's a process that happens on a daily basis. And it's so gradual oftentimes that you don't really see the signs or sometimes things start to happen and you're not exactly sure what it is you're supposed to do. And the saints tell us what we're supposed to do. But for, unfortunately, a lot of people just are not aware of it. And uh, again, this is one of the reasons why I, I started producing the, the videos in the Science of Sainthood was to just to walk people through what it is you do. And when this thing starts to happen to you, here's how you react. And here's what the Lord's doing. Don't get freaked out about this. Just start to do that, you know, and because there is a science to it. And, and it's a it's a movement by which we are daily being converted into the likeness of Jesus Christ. That's why there's not a plateau. We, I, like I'm 53 now. I'm still growing, right? Not maybe not in height, but I'm still growing as a human being. Maybe, actually, maybe now I'm on the downside. I'm, I'm declining. But, you know, in the natural life, you think about it, you're constantly growing up. There's, your body is in constant motion. It's the same thing in the spiritual life. That's why there are no plateaus. You are either moving forward or you are sliding backward. And as Catholics, if we have an obligation to spread the faith in word and deed by virtue of our confirmation, we can't be sliding backwards in our spiritual lives. You can't push anyone forward if you are sliding backwards. It's just impossible, right? So as Catholics, we have to make sure that we are progressing in the spiritual life so that we can, we can draw other people with us up the spiritual mountain toward God. And that's, that's very important. Sorry, Becky. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Say about the, uh, either you're moving forward or sliding backwards. So let me, let me ask you this. Uh, some people that are probably watching this or that are going to be watching afterwards, they may say, oh, am I in a plateau because I, I, I've been doing all these practices. I mean, I, I go to mass even uh, Sunday and then even between, you know, during the weekdays. And, you know, I pr pr pray the rosary every day. I have my mental prayer time every single day. And I don't feel I'm moving anywhere. I feel just dry as opposed to somebody says, oh, I feel so good with my practice. I sit in silence and I'm and I feel just this peace and relaxation. And then you could say, well, maybe one of these two persons is thinking they are in a plateau. The other is maybe thinking, oh, I, I am so advanced. I'm one with the divinity. So, so that's what comes to my mind when I hear that. You know, there's this old song from the 70s, feelings, nothing more <laughs> than feelings, right? And yeah. a lot of people, this is what we equate with the spiritual life. Like, how, am I, how do I feel, you know, doing what it is that I am doing? And the more you go into the interior life, the more you realize that feelings are not an indicator, one or the other, of how well you are doing, right? They're a part of the process because we're humans. So there are times that I'm going to feel joy. There's times that I'm going to feel like I'm flying along in my life of prayer. And there are going to be times that I feel like I'm slogging through wet cement and galoshes, right? Mm -hmm. And there are specific times in the spiritual life. Uh, for example, um, 
where most people, frankly, kind of go off the rails in their life of prayer is when you start to hit those patches of dryness for the first time. Like you have this big conversion experience, you're flying along in the spiritual life. You might even have some of those spiritual consolations like you were just referencing where I'm feeling so great and God's doing these wonderful things in my life. And you want everyone to experience what you're experiencing. And what happens is if you're really sincerely seeking the Lord, all of a sudden you hit this dry spot and you're like, wait a minute. Like, Lord, what happened? Like, I thought we had this thing, right? And now where'd you go? And it's this growth process that you're starting to go through. And, and God has made it feel to you like he's starting to pull back uh, to teach you to grow up. And actually what's happening in reality is he's not getting further away. He's getting closer to you because you've been making a practice of the interior life, but he's gotten so close to you that you can't, you don't have the spiritual senses yet to see how close he is. So the process you're now going through is having those scales fall from your eyes so that you can develop the spiritual senses and recognize that he's gotten closer to you. And so it's this constant process that you are moving through. And that particular time, is really prepping you to move into a deeper life of prayer. You're being prepared to move into the second stage of the spiritual life. You're being prepared to move into con contemplative prayer. But a lot of people don't recognize what's happening in this. And so they keep trying to plow through, you know, their meditations and do the same thing that they've always done and try to remember where all the ribbons go and all the rest of that kind of stuff and their, their breveries. And, and they miss the boat, frankly. They're, they're kind of squashing the Holy Spirit. And so you got to know what's coming. You, you got to know what's happening in your spiritual life, even if you don't have a spiritual director, like everybody wants to have a spiritual director. And in, in some ways, it, you know, we all should have at least spiritual friendships, right? I, I think that spiritual companionship for, the, for most of us is probably what we'll find, right? You want to have people around you, but at the same time, you need to know what to expect. Uh, like you need to know what's going on in your own spiritual life. Not that you can dissect yourself and try and figure out where you are in navel gaze, because you're your own worst spiritual director, but you want to have an idea of what's happening so that you can continue to make progress in the interior life. And again, that's, that's really what the science of sainthood is all about. Matthew, do you find that you hear from a lot of people who are in your science of sainthood program that they had no idea there was this much depth and so many things to learn about the spiritual life? Yeah, I love that because I had the same reaction. In fact, I continue to have the same reaction, right? What we're talking about in the interior life is the divine life, right? Because the interior life in the science of sainthood is exactly that. Sainthood is literally the process of being deified. This is what, to me, I'm speaking at a men's conference in a couple of weeks. In fact, I'm speaking at a group in Cincinnati next week, and this is what I'm going to hammer on. The, the divine life is more than what we think of. It's not just hanging out in heaven and strumming on a little harp, you know, like in a, you know, we're cherubs. We're talking about participating in the divine nature of God. And so we're never going to get to the bottom of that while we're studying the interior life here. And so when you start to understand what the heck it is we're talking about, you're like, wow, you know, people tell me all the time, like my chin's on the floor. I, why did anyone ever tell us this before? Anything? And I had the same reaction. I'm like, well, I'm talking about it now, right? But you don't want to just talk about it. We have to do it. We have to throw ourselves into this. And this movement into the divine life of Jesus Christ is unlike anything else. And it's the only thing in the world that is going to satisfy your deepest longings, because literally this is what every one of us is made for. Me, would you like to um, show us a little of the Science of Statehood website? Yes, I'm going to start raving about that because okay, <laughs> because I I just love the program. One, uh, let me share my screen, and I hope I'm going to do this correctly and not having any any other issues. And I hope everybody can see my screen right now. Uh, let me minimize this. And you should be seeing now the signs of the sign, saint, sainthood, signs of sainthood website when you just open in the landing page. But you'll go through that. I hope you can visit is science of sainthood. Um, dot com. I cannot see the science of sainthood.com. Can I point something out here real quick, V? You see that, you know, right there, that there's an opt in box right there. You can get one of the courses there absolutely free. 
like you can jump into it. There's no, you can see, you can read the verbiage there. There's no, you don't have to put a credit card in. You don't have to cancel anything. You, know, you just put your name and email in and you get access for a couple of weeks. You got 14 videos. It's a full course that comes to you. The, the videos are about 10 minutes long. It's called Catholic Mysticism and the Beautiful Life of Grace. It's a way just to taste absolutely free what the science of sainthood is really all about. Okay, I lost your audio, V, if you can hear me. Okay, yes, I, I had muted. Uh, when, when you go to the members area, this is, this is crazy. I mean, the amount of information that you will, you will find in here. One of the things I like, uh, uh, Matthew, is, uh, yeah, I, I have read also a lot about, and probably the, the books, of Jordan Oman, uh, Gary Gould Lagrange, yeah, Father Dubé, I know all those people, but it's the way that you systematize everything um, and, and you can see the courses in here, Catholic mysticism and the beautiful life of grace. And if we go into the course, you just, you just start breaking down everything from like from the basics. And I think that's one of the things I like the most about your program and why, you know, uh, I talked to Connie and I asked her if, you know, Hey, Connie, what do you think if we, if we bring, bring Matthew into our, our our grouping here live to talk about this because honestly, it, I, I know that studying about the spiritual life doesn't equate to having a spiritual life. Uh, but a, one thing I like is when we go to your courses, they are meant to be not only to receive information because you also have included in here a section about what the saints say and then Lexio Divina and you add a little bit of a meditation because the way this course is, is intended and in, in, in the way I, I'm using it is for that transformative experience in the spirit. Am I correct on that one? Oh, that, that's exactly right. And, and let me just harp on this point. Learning isn't enough, yeah. right? You want to you wanna have the knowledge, but it's about transformation. And so I tried to provide things to meditate on and meditation to help bring out more kernels. They're, they're also guided audio meditations to help people practice mental prayer and understand what's going on. Uh, some of the courses there, like this one has a workbook that goes along with it if you want to get that. But really, it's about, um, it's about this interior transformation. And I broke it down, again, because it's a process. And, and we need to know the parts of, of how you make it through the spiritual life. Yeah, and I mean this this is this is amazing work, Matthew. Honestly, I don't know how you did to digest everything and put it in like in 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 smaller chunks because your videos are not too long. They are like probably 15 minutes, the longest one I have watched. If yeah, I'm not 10, yeah, they're 10 to 15 minutes. There's a couple that yeah. go maybe a little bit longer, but I try to yeah. keep it short because um Lots of times you're you're experiencing concepts that you've never heard before, and you need time to process it. And most people, frankly, go back and watch the videos multiple times. Oh yes, I, I've done myself that, uh, especially when you were explaining about the life of grace, uh, actual grace, and I mean that was wonderful because a lot of people has also those misunderstandings, and probably you go to the catechism and still it's not clear. But but I like. First of all, the the fresh way in which you present the the each of the uh, of the of the classes, e each of the lessons, and 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 they are so practical because you also provide examples from real life. And I have laughed more than once with your sidebar comments. And I'm assuming you are drawing from your own experience <laughs> at home and with your kids. So that is precious because sometimes I can make the connection. Oh, this is where Matthew said about. You know, hungry teenagers <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> so. You know, if, as you scroll down, just to explain to people too, you know, the, the spiritual life, the, the masters of the church break down, and you guys in this community, I'm sure, have heard it before about the three stages of the spiritual life, the purgative, the illuminative, and unitive ways. And really, that's how all of the courses are broken down. So the things that the spiritual writers talk about as having to do with the purgative way, 
that's the first series of courses. And as you move into the, the virtues and you move on from there, that's talked about mostly by the spiritual authors in the illuminative way. And mm. so you'll see the dark night of sense, like that's the transition then into the second stage after you talk about sin and the mystical life and all the rest of it. And you move into the virtues, you know, the moral and theological virtues. And, and it goes on from there uh, into the, finally you get to the dark night of the soul and then the transition into the unitive way. And what do they talk about there? And what does my prayer life look like now? And so it's all built in a systematic way. And if you can see, it says like under the unitive way in deeper prayer, it says course number 12, right? So they're, they're lined up in the order that you want to go through them or you can go through them, although you don't have to, right? I mean, they'll kind of stand alone on their, on, by themselves as well. So there is a, there's a reason why they're structured the way that they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like to add that, you know, one of the things I love about this is that you could read tons and tons of books, take courses to learn all of this, and it would take you a huge amount of time and be difficult because sometimes the reading is really technical and difficult to follow, but you've really broken it down here so that anybody could understand this and follow along and learn about the spiritual life without having to read all the books and, and um, take tons of courses to get what you're offering people here in your courses. And I also like that people can go at their own pace. There are no due dates, no pressure. Um, I, I really appreciate that aspect for, for busy people who don't necessarily have time to take something that might have assignments to do and due dates. Yeah, you know, everybody, everyone's life is busy and mine is too. I have six kids. And so it, I thought if, if I'm going to help encourage people to do this, this is probably the only way, one of the only ways I should say that it's going to happen. It's just got to be broken down. And, and thank you for saying that, Becky, because if you sift through a lot of books and, and it's been a blessing to me to read all those things, right? But I also know that most people don't have the opportunity to do that. So breaking it down into these chunks uh, where you can just kind of consume it and pray over it and let it seep in, uh, based on your own schedule, is really the point of this as well. It's kind of like having a, a, a spiritual director without having a spiritual director uh, in the sense that someone's walking you through what it is you're experiencing as you mature in the spiritual life. Yeah, uh, it, and you gave us this past Lent, uh, Matthew, you gave us the this St. Teresa of Avila's nine grades of prayer. That's, I, that's why I completed 13. Uh, actually, I'm currently working through number eight, Introduction to the Virtues. You can see the progress in here, but I did this during Lent. That was my, my Lenten practice this year. And I have to tell you, I have read Teresa. I have studied her uh, interior castle. I have read many, many times. And I have to tell you the way that you present each of the mansions and, and what's going on there was, was beautiful, really. Thank you. That, that was yeah. a big one for me personally as well. But, you know, it's interesting. We were talking about my past. My sister, who is a pastor's wife, <laughs> and she, uh, she was reading Teresa of Avila, I mean, 30 or 40 years ago. And we just didn't have, I was like, what in the world are you reading? You know, it's so funny because I look back on it now and I just laugh. Like she was so far ahead of the game and I had no idea who Teresa of Avila was. And now she's, she's like one of my best friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In, I tell you, and you have also a very supportive community, Matthew. Um, uh, when we go to, you have the science, science of sainthood community. And I, I love it in there because actually earlier this year that we were going through uh, my husband's uh, hail situation, I requested prayer. People was very, very supported, supportive in that community. Yeah, you know, we can't make it through this world on our own. We just can't. We need a community of people. And I know you guys have a lot of that in your, your Facebook group that you have. And, and we need people around us, but particularly people who are interested in the spiritual life uh, because they help us to grow as well. And they cheer us on when we need it. And they give us prayer uh, support when we need it as well. And so I try to give an, op uh, an option for people to, to engage. A lot of people don't engage, but they'll go in and they, they look right? And they're reading and they want to read the other comments that people make. 
and lots of people comment on the videos themselves. So there's a lot of interaction and there are a lot of very quiet eyeballs uh, on, on what is being said as well. But I, I hope that it's, it's a place where a lot of people can grow together. Yeah, but you also have Q&A sessions that you do from time to time and people can join you live and then we can watch the, the replacing here, the, the recordings. Yeah, because there are a lot of different questions that come up. And man, I've gotten some really deep ones before from people. There are some really incredible people in the science of sainthood. And it gives me a chance to go back and, and go a little bit deeper on some issues that come up or to answer questions that come up all the time that all of us have at one point or another. And just to, to engage those because, again, you can never exhaust this stuff because we're talking about the infinite God. And so there are always going to be questions that pop up. Yeah, you, you have several of those. Uh, Matthew, one of the uh, things that interests me is that you want to start, I apologize for the dog in the background, um, you want to uh, offer individual courses to parish, parish groups. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, I'm just getting ready to launch this. I appreciate you bringing this up. I've been working behind the scenes like a madman. Uh, some of the, the courses, like Beautiful uh, Catholic Mysticism and the Beautiful Life of Grace, which you see on the screen right now, uh, and Introduction to the Psalms, as well as St. Teresa of Avila's Nine Grades of Prayer, are the three courses that are available uh, as individual courses that people can go and order, put a group together and go through it themselves, and it will give you an access of a year uh, to the, that particular course. And you get a workbook in the mail, an interactive digital workbook as well. And then I'm, I'm putting together a parish option as well, where a parish can actually come in and purchase a license by which it can teach groups in the parish and have really SOS groups. That, that's kind of what I'm, I'm kind of angling toward. We need people in every parish intensely studying the spiritual life because programs are programs, right? What we need is an interior transformation that changes the person from the inside out, because when you get when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you and you dive into the interior life, then all the other aspects of your life fall into place as well. And you get excited about the Catholic faith in general. You're going to be a better parent. You're going to be a better uh, evangelizer. You're going to just be a better parishioner, a better Catholic. And that's going to attract people uh, to the faith. And so I want to make uh, something available on a parish level to get people excited about the interior life and have parishes changed. Yeah, Matthew, we have a comment, a, a question in our chat uh, from Lisa Collins Bus. She says, to do a group study, would everyone in the group need to be a member? No, so you can purchase an individual course. And again, at the time that you are doing this right now, uh, on Friday, what is it, September 9th, uh, it is not, you wouldn't see it right now on my, on the scienceofsainthood.com website, but I think next Monday, I believe it'll go live. So you can purchase one course and people can go in and individual members are going and purchase their access. You all get a workbook, et cetera, and you come together and meet. And again, the parish option is a separate thing that's coming. It's a little bit down the line still, but you don't have to join the entire thing in order to become, uh, in order to start in on various courses. Yeah. So uh, Matthew, back again to the, a. Uh... You have different different uh, options for joining, but it, honestly, I would I would invite everybody watching this to at least try the the free access so you could see for yourself. Um, I mean, I know you don't have a huge production a team, and I learned that when I watch a, one of your introductory videos. But the quality of the videos is so so good, Matthew. So good. Um, I don't even know how you do it. The lightning and, and, the, and the, the sound, the editing. Are you wearing all those hats? Because it's, it's very high quality. And well, thank you. Uh, you know what? The Catholic faith deserves to be beautiful. And, uh, and so I was able to take some of the skills that the Lord taught me in, in previous uh, positions that I held. And I, I brought it to bear here. And, and I pray that uh, the people will fall in love with the beauty of the Catholic faith because you know what God is truth, beauty, and goodness, and so we need the things that we are doing to be beautiful, uh, to to attract people to the faith. Yeah, I, I I like also the images you use to accompany each of your of your lessons, and and you are constantly quoting from from the the doctors of the church, 
from spiritual i mean you're you're you are quoting you know the the heavy heavy guns in your <laughs> spiritual life so yeah. i i appreciate that really really much well I, the other thing is too if uh, there are any priests watching this i offer a science of sainthood membership to priests and to active seminarians absolutely free and so if people want to contact me through the science of sainthood website if you're a priest um, I'd be happy. I have more than 600 priests that are in there right now that are scholarship and in there for free. And I, I gladly offer that to you uh, just to, to help you because lots of priests, uh, frankly, don't have time for further spiritual formation, or maybe they didn't get it in seminary the way they should have or whatever, but it's there as an option for you if, uh, if you want that. It wouldn't it be great if the people watching this, they decide to join and then they invite their pastors <laughs> It, it happens. And that's a great, I mean, I love it when that happens because when you get excited about it and you start to hear about it from your priest, my, the priests in my parish are both really into the spiritual life. Man, does it change, you know, what you, your experience of the liturgy, because you can see the Holy Spirit in them. It's beautiful and it just changes everything. So yeah, if you want to invite your priest in, I'm telling you, just have them contact me through the Science of Sainthood website and they're in. It's easy. Yeah. Becky, are you going to own me? I was just going to say that was, that is wonderful and so generous too. And so exciting that, um, that priests and seminarians who may not have had the, some of this formation can now get it and get it for free. That is, that is a wonderful gift, Matthew. Well, you know, it's a privilege to be able to do it. And uh, it would be great if I could make it free for everybody. But again, I have six kids and this is, this is a, literally my full-time job. So that's why I have to, to charge for it. But um, I'm, I'm really happy to do that. And I try to make it as cheap as possible uh, because I mean, comparatively, um, when you look at trying to go to college or something like that, this, this is a drop in the bucket. And I realize sometimes it's difficult for people to, to be able to afford these things. And I get contacted from people, frankly, in Africa or other places, or even in the States that they can't afford to, to do it. And, and I typically just, you know, I will give them a scholarship to do it. But if you can pay, please do so I can keep it going. That's and, right. And it's, in terms of cost, you know, you can spend on a, a you know, just a kind of a continued learning um, spiritual theology course. Um, what a year you would spend in science of sainthood would, runs about the same as, as a course elsewhere. Um, and so it's really, you know, I think it's a, it's a great deal as far as um, what you would pay for, for this kind of a course somewhere else. And I'm still adding to it. So there are about 20 courses up there right now. And, uh, and I'm continuing, I'm, I'm still in the, uh, what is temptation or how to resist temptation is a series I'm, I'm working on right now. And I'm praying about what the next one is going to be. And we'll see, I don't want to reveal it yet because I'm still praying about what, you know, what I'm going to do, but uh there's a whole lot more to be said. And so I will be adding to this for the foreseeable future because there are a lot of topics to cover and uh, they need to be talked about. And that's so wonderful because we'll never catch up to you if we're taking the courses as long as you're adding to it. <laughs> yeah. so, so you have options for people to join on a monthly basis, on an annual basis. And I think you also have a three months basis, correct? That is correct, yep. And, uh, and now the individual courses as well. So if you just want to dip in and purchase one of the courses that's available with a workbook, you can do that as well. And test it out. That, that is awesome. Yeah, so we, ha we have a lot of people watching. If you still have a question, we have a few more minutes and you can write it on the comment section. But definitely, Matthew, this this has been very, very good. Uh, I it, Personally, the, the section on the on the dark night that was very good for me particularly because even though you read it and and yeah i'm i'm under spiritual direction but sometimes you you need to hear it again you know okay it's normal what you're going through don't don't worry about it, it just keep on going so yeah you know it, one of the things i think that we we need to remember you know particularly when you're talking about that topic and people get scared about the spiritual life because they think it's going to be so much work and it's going to be so difficult and, they, and they're like that's not for me it's for other people it's for every single one of us first of all our movement what john of the cross and teresa Ava, Ava lay out for us that's where we're all going to go right one way or the other if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing 
we're going to end up there. It might be after some time on the purgatory floor, but this is where we end up in the arms of Jesus Christ, right? We're in this, this betrothed and spiritual marriage with him. And a lot of people get freaked out that, you know, I can't do it or it's too scary. Even the dark night of the soul, it's all a movement of love, right? This is what we have to get through our heads. Even the, the parts that we don't fully understand or might scare us just a little bit because of what might be asked of us. And, and the Lord's asking something of all of us. He's asking us to give ourselves to him, right? But it's all a movement of love. And the Lord is not going to force us through doors that we're not ready for yet. He is, he's a father. God is our father. And he loves us more than we can possibly imagine. And just like I'm not going to take my kids and try and make them grow up too fast if I'm being a good dad. God doesn't do that either. And so he, he just leads us gently by the hand through these stages of the spiritual life. And so we can start to see things more. And he gives us the ability to receive more of his grace so that we can make progress in the spiritual life, all in this movement of love. And just like in the natural life, there are going to be times when you're happy or sad. It's fun. It's hard, whatever. But it's all a movement toward this divine love, a divine intimacy that you cannot find anywhere else. And, and if, if this is what the goal of heaven is all about, then why aren't we doing it right now? Because eternity isn't something later. It starts right now. We're preparing ourselves to move into that next phase, but it's not another life. You got one life to live. This is it. And so we want to move into that even now. Why? So that we can have a more beautiful life now in Jesus Christ, but also so that we can be closer to Christ in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's the goal. We want to be as close to him as we possibly can be. That's why you want to start right now, because the rewards are literally out of this world. Yeah. And, and another thing I appreciate, Matthew, is that you, you set the record straight when it comes to the confusion there is with contemplation. When we hear contemplation these days, I mean, it can mean it can mean several things, but I, I like that the way you explain it, it's in alignment with the, the, the mystical tradition of the church, the real one, because we know there's other movements like Centering Prayer that they they say that they come from back in the, the Hesychast from the East and also from, you know, that they, they come from the Desert Fathers and, and it, that is that is a novelty that that just was born in the 1960s or the or, 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 and, and, and I appreciate so much that you you keep true to the mystical tradition of the church, the real one, not the novelty. And you explain it and you clarify why those new movements on, on, on centering prayer are not a, you know, that those promises that, hey, you're going to reach contemplation. If you do this, if you just come to the realization that you are already there. <laughs> that... Yeah, you know, it, we don't have to go any further from the tradition of the church <laughs> because it, it, there is so much there. And when you when you start to get into it, you recognize and you can you don't even need to know about all the other kinds of novelties that are out there, as you put it, the because once you start to understand the actual trajectory of the spiritual life of how God moves in your life, you will recognize falsity when you see it because everything is a movement of grace. And that movement into the contemplative uh, life of prayer that you were talking about, that's all it is. It's a movement of grace. It's something that God does to us as he is drawing us closer to him. We can't make it happen. We have a part to play, right? Our part is putting ourselves in a position to be able to receive the grace that God wants to pour out upon us. And, and that's what the life, the purgative life is about, getting rid of sin in our lives and focusing on our predominant fault and trying to deal with that and, and practicing meditative prayer on a daily basis. That's tilling the soil so that those seeds of glory, the seeds of grace that God plants will begin to, to take root and grow in our life, but under God's power. And he draws us in. And we can't make it happen. I can't force myself into relationship with him. That's not how relationships work in the human life. It's not how they work in the superhuman or supernatural life either. God is going to draw us to himself. But again, our job, we have a part to play. We have to do things. You can't just sit there and not do anything. Our problem is most of the time we're too active, right? We want to do too much. And there comes a point in time, this move into contemplative prayer that you're talking about, 
where we pull back from doing and we simply receive what the Lord is, is giving to us. It's a huge transition point in the interior life. And if you don't understand that, you're going to be suckered in by a lot of people that are promoting things and just really aren't in line with the church, even goodwill people. I'm not saying that they're not doing it because they're evil people. They think what they're doing is okay, but you have to understand what the church actually teaches because otherwise you're just going to buy yourself some spiritual misery because you're not going to be able to make progress in the interior life. And that's really what we want to do. Yeah. That, that, that's great, Matthew. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Becky. I was just going to say the dark night of sense um, course. That is so wonderful and so helpful. In authentic contemplative prayer, we often encounter people that we think may be in that stage in their spiritual life. And it's so hard to guide them. And it's, it's so helpful to have something that they could refer to, to learn about. Um, so they, so they know that they're, they're just not lost. They, you know, they haven't just completely fallen off the cliff in their spiritual life, just to, just to keep going, that God will su supply the grace for you to, to move through this night into what's coming afterwards. Yeah. You know, and, and, uh, God bless your group. God bless your Facebook book group and, and anyone and everyone who is really enthused about the interior life. Um, we need that. We need people focusing on that and understanding what takes place because enthusiasm, uh, the negative side of it is that while we want to have it, um, when the enthusiasm dies away and you start to go through the dark night of sense, you don't want to stop. And so it's great that you guys are talking to people and forming people uh, as, as to what to do uh, as you make progress, because you got to have, how can you, how can you know some, or how can you love somebody you don't know? I mean, really, because at the end of the day, that's what all of this is. It's really just about knowing Jesus Christ. St. Augustine says, you got to know yourself and you have to know God and you need both of those things, right? So you need to understand what's going on in your own interior life and your own natural person and your own struggles, but you have to know who God is in order to fall in love with him. Really, that's what all of these courses are about. It doesn't matter what the topic is. Underneath it all is growing in knowledge of ourself and of Jesus Christ. And the more you know of yourself and the more you know of Jesus Christ, the deeper and stronger your relationship can be. And you can weather the storms of this life both naturally and supernaturally. And you can defend yourself against the evil one. You can make progress in the spiritual life and you can become a saint because that is no cliche. That's the end goal. Yeah, it, it, and thank you, Matthew, because sometimes we think, oh no, I, oh no, I'm not a saint. I, I'm not, that's not for me. Uh, but in reality, if we are not saints, there's no union with God. There's no beatific vision. Right? Right. They're only saints in heaven. They're the only people there are the saints in heaven. That's it. And, and you don't want to go to purgatory. You know, if you can avoid it, stay out of purgatory. I'm probably going to be there forever. But you want to <laughs> avoid it, right? And there are kind of two senses. You, you heard uh, some saints will talk about how it's, you know, it's a movement of love and and you know you're 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 desiring God, and that's what the suffering is. And then John on the cross will describe it as worse than a thousand deaths. And you're like, oh man, I don't want to go there. So be a saint now, right? Make progress now, so that because what you know the sufferings of the next life, the sufferings in purgatory are not meritorious. But what you do now in your interior life, and you're conforming yourself to Jesus Christ, you're picking up your daily cross and following Him. That's meritorious. You're, you're, you're achieving something because you're making an act of the will and you're doing it. You're moving toward Christ while you still have a choice in the matter. And the spiritual life is just that. It's a choice of love for Jesus Christ. That's why you want to do this. That's why you want to move through it. Amen to that. Man, it's, I tell you what, this, this hour has been awesome, Matthew, uh, talking about the science of signhood and, and, and having the opportunity to show uh, the members in authentic contemplative prayer and also other people that, you know, uh, happens to catch this uh, live stream through the websites or the pages of the people that has shared. So it's being, it's being an honor and it's being awesome just how how energetic and how how on fire you are for 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 this topic i mean it's just it's great becky any any last yes I, I would just like to say i so appreciate anyone 
out there who is sharing about the spiritual life and mental prayer and all, all these things that we may not necessarily have gotten in our formation growing up. And I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my Carmelite heart that you're one of those voices doing this and doing this in such a powerful and wonderful way. Well, it yeah. is my, it's my honor and privilege. I, you know, um, the only, I'm a nobody, right? I am literally a nobody. Anything and everything that I do and anything that any of us do is through and for the glory of Jesus Christ, right? And so we all take up our roles and we do what we can. And every one of us has a vocation and, uh, you know, find that vocation and find that inner fire that the Lord will give you in the divine life as you study the interior life and let him do with you what he will. And, and he will help transform lives, starting with your own, moving out to your family, and then your friends and even your enemies uh, will be transformed once you have that interior transformation in Jesus Christ. And so it's a privilege and an honor to be able to talk about it. And I want it badly for myself and my kids and everybody else in the world. Beautiful. Thank you. And Becky mentioned her her Carmelite heart. Well, I, I thank you from the bottom of my Dominican. <laughs> heart. You know what's hilarious about that, V, is that that really the science of sainthood is Carmelite spirituality distilled in a Dominican way. I mean, yeah. really, that, that's what it is because the Dominicans are so great at systematizing things and presenting them in a way that you can move through them in a progression like that. You read Teresa of Avila, she is not systematic, right? In any way, shape or form. But the Dominicans, they were able to take her and kind of parcel her up. And so I, I brought the two of them together in the science of sainthood. So you guys are like Batman and Robin. Yeah, yeah, and, and you you use Jordan Oman, who's a Dominican, Gary Gulagranch yep. is a Dominican as well, and I don't know, I have always seen that we Dominicans are like in love with the, the Carmelite doctors. In <laughs> well, you know what, because we're all part of the same family. Exactly, in the end, that, that's true, it's the way we live, uh, our calling here, so I invite everybody also to explore the late Dominicans. <laughs> Absolutely. But, yeah, but Matthew, say, thank you so much for having shared this this hour with us. And I, I probably, whenever you are ready to launch your parish version, maybe we can have you uh, live in here and also bring it to everybody uh, and, and show them the, the the great work you're going to be doing for the the parish, uh, the parishes providing this program. Or whenever you have it already. Well, ready to I, launch. I appreciate that. You know, in fact, it's already it's already working. I just haven't made it visible to the public yet. So if you have a parish and you're interested in doing that, by all means, you can just contact me through the Science of Sainthood site. There's a contact form on there. Tell me you're interested and I can share with, you know, with people about it. But it, it will be public very soon. Yeah. And we have a comment from our founder, Connie Rossini, who has been sending hearts every time you say something. And she says, Thank you for your work for the kingdom. It's invaluable. Oh, thank you very much. And right back at you, Connie. Yeah. And a Marian servant, Lisa says, thanks from this Marian servant heart also. <laughs> <laughs> you have all the, all the tertiary and, 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 and late Dominicans and people already liking. But thank you very much, Matthew. Becky, also thank you for, for uh, co-hosting with me today. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, God Matthew. You God bless you. God bless you. And have a good afternoon or rest of the day, wherever you're watching, watching this and somewhere in the world. <laughs> Thank you very much. God bless you. Have a great day.